Steelers have something to really, really be concerned about? All that and more coming up. You know what time it is. First take in the house. Let's get it. It's as big as they get on Monday Night Football. Defense is going to win it. Defense win a championship. Brady able to throw and hit Evans again. Trying to spin for more. And he gets there. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Goff throwing and completing. Van Jefferson for the touchdown. Here's Brady to throw. Underthrown. Intercepted. Goff throwing. Akers out of the backfield for the touchdown for the Rams. Here's Brady. Too far for Brady and intercepted. And it's a solid team victory for the L.A. Rams. What a game. What's going on, everybody? Welcome into First Take. Thank you for being with us. Look who's here. Super Bowl champ on our screen. Jeff Saturday. Jeff, always ah. good to see you. Max, Stephen A., I'm Molly Karam. What? Are you mad? Because he's going to correct the Steve I mean, the do, I have, do I have to look at Jeff this early? Do I have, do I have to look at Jeff? No, I usually get to see him at around 11 o'clock. I got to deal with him at the top of the show. <laughs> he came here to mess with me this early. No. You know it, you. Stephen A. You know it. That's right. Uh -oh. That's right. And by, Stephen and by a, the get way, ready, baby. You just took a little shot. Uh, you know, I, I'm always ready. I'm always ready. And by the way, Max and Molly, especially you, Molly, I got a text this morning. Now, I lost a bet two years ago. And, and, and Mr. Rose, as in Jalen Rose, texted me to remind him that I owe him a pair of sneakers, which he is right about. That's how my morning started. Well, I had to hear Max's voice first. Then I had to hear Jalen Rose reminding me of a bet that I lost. And now I got Jeff Saturday. And damn it, it ain't even 10.02. <laughs> good, lo good Lord. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> everyone has, everyone feels very sorry it? for you, Stephen A. You have a very tough life. Yeah. Stephen A., why don't you pick up some his and hers? I'm a size eight and a half. I won't be mad at you. Christmas is right around the corner. I got you. <laughs> I got you, balance. Molly. For you, for you, I will do I that. I believe you. I will do that. I believe you. I do. All right, size fellas. Uh, yeah. Max, I know you were watching, as Stephen A. would say, with your Beetlejuice eyes, because Tom Brady did not look like himself. <laughs> the Rams get the win. Tom, talk to us. You've come up with so many game-winning drives in the fourth quarter and overtime, Tom. So on a night like this, how disappointed are you in yourself? Absolutely, yeah. I think that's a good word, disappointed, and uh, I have to do a better job. Absolutely. We've had some chances, definitely, and receivers are doing a great job, and i got to get on the ball. So i got to figure out how to do that. All right, Stephen A., tell me this. After last night, do you still trust Tom Brady? I do. I don't like what I saw last night. I'll be the first to admit that. But when we talk about whether I trust him or not, I'm going to go to somebody's body of work as opposed to, you know, what they've done in the immediate, in the immediate moment. I'm not going to be a prisoner of the moment when it comes to Tom Brady. Certainly, he was overthrowing receivers. Certainly, that he's leading the league in incompletions with 20-plus yards. I think he's got about 33 incompletions on the year. We know that's not impressive. He's completed about 25% of his passes for 15 or 20 yards plus. Uh, so we get all of that. And we understand it. And when you've got Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Gronkowski, and of course, Braid, and of course, Antonio Brown, there is simply no excuse for it. Tom Brady's got to get his act together because the losses that he has incurred this season has been a bit against top quality teams. But what I would remind everybody is that he's supposed to have a veteran coach in Bruce Arians that would ask him to stop throwing those damn things. Why don't you throw some intermediate passes? Why don't you run the damn football? You've got Ronald Jones. You've got uh, uh, Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette is no slouch. You got him there for a reason. Engage in some ball control. Move the chains. Run the damn football for crying out loud. It's not just the receivers that are out there with your 43-year-old quarterback. It's, it's those running backs as well. Take some of that pressure off of Tom Brady. And, oh, by the way, I'm not going to let the defense off the hook. I know numbers-wise, they're one of the top defenses in the league, led by Todd Bowles, who obviously is a stout defensive coordinator. But – Two of, the, two of the days where they really, really wet the bed was when they got blown out by New Orleans. And then last night, again, no pressure on Jared Goff whatsoever. He sat back, took pictures, called this lady, said, I'm coming. What time you want dinner tonight? Let's hang out afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there was just no pressure whatsoever. I mean, he was standing back there taking pictures for crying out loud. So I look at all of those things and I'm saying this is the ultimate team sport, is it not? 
It's football. It's not just one side of the ball. It's three sides of the ball. Special teams. It's defense. It's offense. It's also not just a quarterback. It's your head coach. It's your offensive coordinator. This is about the third time this year. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff Saturday. This is about the third time this year at least that we have looked at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and said schematically, we are not impressed with the game that's been called by Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich. We're not impressed. And so somehow, some way, they've got to get it together. The question is, do you trust that Tom Brady will? And I'm saying, even at 43, with these multitude of weapons, with what I've seen him do in good moments this year, I believe that when it's time, he will show up. You're going to have to show me differently. Until I see it, I'm not going to believe otherwise. When we ask the question, do you still trust Tom Brady? We mean in the moment of truth, game on the line. Here's the ball. You got a minute yep. left or something like that. Are you going to lead him down yep. the field? That's really what we're talking about because I have acknowledged Tom Brady can still play quarterback. At his age, it's remarkable. And yes, he has weapons all around him. Whatever you want to say about Bruce Arians right now, Bruce Arians is a well-respected and good NFL head coach, right? I know it's saying Bruce Ar Arians is no good. Or, or that people don't respect Bruce Arians. He has a solid reputation. So, it, look, do you still trust Tom Brady? They really needed a win last year in New England against Miami on the, you know, in the last game week of the season. Last game of the season, they needed that win in Miami so they could have a bye in the first round, so they could have home field. They lost to Miami. They lost to the team they needed to beat in their division. How often has that happened to the Patriots on the last game of the, in the last game of the season? And you can say what you want. Tom Brady didn't have weapons and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, he had a defense. He had a great head coach. So you can't point there. Yeah, you have to also look at Brady. They didn't get it done, and Brady didn't get it done. This year so far, there have been some critical games uh, against, obviously, their chief divisional rivals. They've lost them uh, badly the second time. Um, against Chicago, right? Brady gets the ball back with, you know, Nick Foles hit that, hit that receiver for the first down when he needed to. They kicked the field goal. Uh-oh, they left too much time for Tom Brady. Oh, boy, you gave Tom Brady the ball with time on the clock. Here it comes. No, it didn't. He had tough throws to make, it's true, but he didn't make them. And then he had a, a mental breakdown. Now, do I trust Tom Brady to rebound, to lead his team, to make sure they clean up the errors from the week before? Yeah, I trust him in that way. But I think we're talking about more than that. We're talking about the great Tom Brady, who here it is, the moment of truth, go get it done. I haven't seen him do that in a while when they need him most. And, you know, the reasons are obvious. He's old now. And you can point to his head coach. I mean, come on. You can't always point fingers. Last year, he didn't have weapons in New England. But he had the greatest head coach of all time. He had an elite defense. And he had a system he knew extremely well. And an offensive coordinator and all that. This year, he has every weapon you could imagine. Did you see Mike Evans after the catch yesterday? Like, the kind of, like he has weapons. He doesn't even know what to do with. He has so many weapons. And he has a defense. Now we're pointing to the head coach. No. Tom Brady, once upon a time, had a huge kind of advantage in decision making. The league has caught up in that way. But as it's caught up, there are lots of quarterbacks who have who don't make bad decisions constantly anymore, right? Like that has gotten better in the league and it's coincided with his physical deterioration just because of age. He's not and a league where quarterbacks can do much more now physically. So I, I don't think it's fair to, today, the day after that game, the way it ended, to, and by the way, it's not like it was a scoring fest. 27-24 is like a regular NFL score. I don't think you can point to the defense either. I don't think it's fair today to point fingers at people other than Tom Brady first. I think it's, I think it's Brady, and I don't trust him in those moments like I used to. You know, when you think about Tom Brady and the opportunity he had last night like you said two you know under two minutes on the clock you get the ball you got a chance to go down tie or win the football <laughs> game you know what are the expectations i think as you look at it it, it he did not show th what we've expected of tom brady right the overthrow to break it wasn't even close and i think the concern for me is and and you know i thought Stephen a did a good job of bringing up the numbers the offense and what's being asked of Tom Brady, like what are they What are they truly asking him to do? And he's leading the league in incompletions of 20 yards and further and all those kinds of things. 
but it's because of what's being asked. So his eyes are now taking him into much more dangerous throws than he would have tried to attempt in New England. If you think about all of those drives that happened at the end of game, Think about how many dinks and dunks really occurred as they moved the ball down. It was very possession-related, and this is not the way the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are constructed. So when you're, you're trying to place blame or whatever we're trying to do in the conversation, I don't think it just lies at the feet of Tom Brady. I think he's trying to do what he's being coached to do. The disconnect for me is... It's showing that he's not capable of making the throws that you are now demanding of him. And not just because of last night. If you proceed earlier in the season, like th this is this is a common theme, right? If he, I think before last night, he was one of 13 in the last couple games of, of, of 15 plus yard type throws. This, this, is, this is concerning. And here's the other part, is that when you're asking him to make those deep throws, the offensive line is not keeping the pocket clean enough where he can step up. And the book on every, every pocket passer is, if you make him reset or move his feet, take his eyes down, they're not the same quarterback. And that's been true since day one. So you're seeing kind of all of the kryptonite kind of get thrown at him at one time, asking him to do some.